Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today it is time to start a new historical project! Yay! So if you watched my recent video about talking about my upcoming plans, you might remember that I said that my next project on my list was a 1950s version of the pink dress from Cinderella. But after making my 19 teens dress, I'm just really in that like historical summer dress mood. So we are going to switch those projects and we are going to make the white flowy cotton summery dress, historical dress, and then do Cinderella after that. You also might remember in that video that I couldn't decide whether I wanted to make an 1890s flowy cotton summer dress or a 19 aughts flowy cotton summer dress. And you know what? I still can't decide. So I'm making both. I know. I, I should just make decisions, but I'm not like that. So anyway, my plan for this project is that I have just shy of 10 yards, I think it's about nine and a half yards, of white Swiss dot cotton. And with that yardage, I am going to attempt to make one skirt that can work for both the 1890s and the 19 aughts because skirt shapes really don't change that much between the two decades. And then, assuming I have enough fabric, I am going to make two bodices. So I'm going to make an 1890s bodice that is going to be inspired by these lovely, beautiful plates. And when that is done, I am going to make a 19 aughts bodice that is inspired by this sort of look. So as you can see, they're fairly different looks that I'm going for, even though they're both summery and they're both less than 10 years apart from each other. But I just feel like that 1890s look, that is so much structure versus that 19 aughts look is that really light, flowy look. But both of them should be able to work with the same skirt. So let's go ahead and get started on this project. We are going to do the skirt first because that takes up the bulk of the yardage and the bodices will be able to be cut out from around the skirt pieces and if it all comes down to it, potentially pieced, or if it really comes down to it, potentially just one bodice. But fingers crossed that we can get both bodices and the skirts out of my nine and a half yards of Swiss dot cotton. So I spent a while last week trying to decide what I wanted this skirt shape to look like because I really wanted something that would be able to flow and feed well for both eras. And what I kind of determined is that I would use a pattern out of the Victorian Dressmaker Volume 2, which is Prior Attire's new book. If you haven't checked this book out, I will link that down below. It is amazing. She's got two books out now that are just filled with resources, patterns, instructions, etc. Please go check this book out. Check out her channel if you're not already following Prior Attire. I will link that down below as well. She does amazing videos here on YouTube. And I am going to be using her pattern for the 1893 to 95 walking dress skirt portion, just the skirt. And that pattern looks like that. So it's going to have a front that is fairly standard, a side back that is fairly standard, and a back that is fairly standard. But the side front is really cut on quite a swing, almost similar to a circle skirt pattern. It's got that much swing out into the skirts. So I think that this skirt shape is going to be really, really interesting and hopefully really pretty. So first I'm going to draft up this pattern, which I have done a whole video on how to draft skirt patterns up from books. So I will link that up above and down below in the description. If you haven't already seen that, you can check that out. I'm not going to go into any depths of how to do that in this video because that video already exists. So I'm just going to blow this up and put this, really draw this out directly on my cotton. I don't make mock-ups for skirts. In my opinion, that's a huge waste of fabric. I can generally trust myself to do like the math to size up a pattern and just plot it and draw it out. Honestly, it's also a lot of times I feel easier than using a really, really large paper pattern just to draft out your pattern directly on your fabric because a lot of these, they're really hard even just like get out on a table because they're so large. So that's what I'm gonna dive into first. 
So I had started out with thinking I was going to do these gathers up here because if I pull it tight, which is how this pattern is really designed to be, it's designed to sit tightly along here and then flare out significantly on that back seam. And if I do that with the sheer fabric, I just thought it would look really weird. But honestly, even this level of gathering, I feel like looks really lacking. And so I was going to cut out these pieces first because they're the largest pieces, like each one is literally basically a full width of fabric by the time it gets to the bottom. And in fact, I'm actually uh, in this, what I've done right here is I have drawn a line on here. Hopefully you can see that orange line in there. I've drawn that orange line as like where the edge of my piece is gonna be. And I cut along this one, which is just a slightly curved line and did a gathering stitch, but I haven't cut anything else off because I just really wasn't sure because according to my calculations this should have gone way off the edge of the fabric and I just wanted to try it first seeing if I could get away with not doing that and just doing it to the edge of the fabric and I don't know now I'm all wishy-washy about this piece entirely so I am now going to cut the back back side and front pieces from the other end of this bolt yeah my room's a mess and then see once those are all together how I feel about this piece. So I've cut out all of the pieces now but I'm really having a hard time still trying to decide how to cut this one. Okay I mean I haven't cut this one I've cut out all the other pieces so I have like all of the gathering and pleating and stuff going on in the back here it's just pinned in place and then this is the question. So right now I've kind of slid these gathers off to the side so they don't exist and I tried to fold down the waist here because would basically it would curve more going over the hip and I just worry that it's not gonna fit over the hip I just uh, yeah because see it's making these lines and like that shouldn't be there so like if I scoot this back in with the gathers then it will like it'll make it over the hip but then it's all gathery I'm gonna have to sleep on this and decide tomorrow how I want that to be I figured it out so I was playing around with different options for what I could do with that skirt panel and what I had come up with last night, I mean I tried the gathering one and then I tried, I don't remember if I even showed you or not, but I tried darting that panel because I noticed that in Janet Arnold there was a dress that was an early Edwardian dress and it had a really similar shaped panel which is this one here but it had darts all around the top for fitting so I decided I would give that a try but I felt like I just still wasn't really getting the skirt shape that I was after. So there's also a Janet Arnold dress from the mid 1890s. In fact, it's literally the next page from the one that I was kind of looking at before along with the prior attire book. And that one just has a, I guess it's a total of Mm, nine panels eight panels something like that it's got a lot more panels it has three side panels on it so that is this one right here which looks like this which is honestly kind of similar-ish to what I'm going for for the 1890s one anyway so that's what I wound up doing I used that same area where I had drawn out the skirt shape to begin with and I drew out the skirt shapes instead for the two side front and side panels like in this new Janet Arnold pattern instead of the other Janet Arnold and prior attire and truly Victorian pattern. So this one I think is still going to work just fine. It's definitely giving me the shape now that I want. Everything is just pinned onto the form. I haven't sewn it together or anything like that. I'm hoping that I can do that this week and that this can be like a complete vlog of like the skirt putting on a waistband and everything but I'm going to Disneyland in less than 48 hours. So I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. We shall see. I'm not sure when this vlog is gonna come out. <laughs> but I'm really excited that I now have like more of a specific plan. Everything's all cut out. It's really very different, I feel like, than any other 1890s skirts and skirt patterns that you see out there because 1890s skirts, generally speaking, are super, super structured. I mean, I've got a couple of 1890s skirts that I swear, I haven't weighed them, but I swear they weigh 20 pounds a piece. Both my gala gown one, the yellow, which you've seen before, and then I also have a navy one, which if you go way back to like shenanigans at the Mary Olson farm or something like that video from 
I want to say early September of last year, you will see that one there. And they both weigh a ton because there's so many layers of just like there's horsehair braid or horsehair canvas in there. There is a whole lining layer. I mean, there's so many layers of structure in an 1890 skirt. And I've talked about this before that the petticoats wind up kind of doing less in the 1890s because the skirts themselves are doing more. But not for this. This is a lightweight summer dress and the fabric is practically sheer. So I'm really having to take a different approach for this skirt than I am used to for the 1890s because all of the patterns out there are for structured interlined horsehair canvas faced etc skirts. So I'm kind of winging it. We'll see how it goes and uh, hopefully I wind up with a really pretty skirt that I can use hybrid for both 1890s and 19 aughts. Oh, that is the other good piece of news or piece of good news is that I have now finished cutting out all of the skirt pieces and I looked at how much fabric that I have left. I have at least three if not ho four whole yards plus like cut pieces left of the Swiss dot cotton. So I should almost certainly be able to get both bodices out of here. So ideally I will be doing the 1890s one first and then the 19 aughts out of these same fabrics and just very different looking different shaped types of bodices. So very excited to get going with that but for now I'm gonna get back to the skirt. So the skirt is looking a bit more like a skirt. I am not going to finish this before I go to Disney, but we are very close. I have all of the panels seamed together here. I did opt to not do pockets in this skirt. Generally speaking, this type of skirt, because it's so slim to the hips right around really like the whole hips, because of that, there's no room for pockets in like where you would have pockets modernly speaking. For example, the jumper dress that I did last year, which I will link down below, I had originally put pockets in there, but because it's so slim, they actually gaped open and look terrible and I wound up taking them out. So with this, I just opted to not do pockets at all. If they put pockets in their skirts of this era, they were almost always right in the center back. <laughs> and to me, that is like, the least functional idea. I don't know what you put in a pocket back there or how easy it is to access, but like nowadays, one of the main things that you put in your pocket is like a phone and you don't really want your phone back there either. So if I'm gonna only be able to have a pocket back there, then I might as well have no pocket at all, particularly because this is a semi-sheer fabric. It's just not gonna work with pockets. So anyway, the way that I have done this now, there are three side pieces on each side. There's one center front and one center back. My one worry with the center front is that it's possibly too far to the seams. It's looking pretty good in Antoinette here. I have not yet tried it on myself, so we'll have to kind of wait and see how that looks on me but there's the one seam here and then this panel right here has a small pleat towards the back of the panel I'll show you this closer up as well and then the there are two more little pleats as it gets to the side back as in the panel that is right next to the center back and then the side backs and the center back are all gathered I did debate about gathering versus pleating and I feel like I wish I had a little bit more fabric to gather because I would really love super dense gathers and I do not have that it may wind up being that I just bring the gathers to the center back letting a little bit more of those side back panels just be flat and maybe we'll do that. I'll have to decide before I go to put the waistband on. I'll probably try it on myself and just see what looks best. But that's what's going on so far. So everything is pinned to Antoinette. Let me show you what that looks like close up. So this is what those panels are looking like. This is that first pleat that I mentioned in the side front panel. And then we've got a pleat here in the side panel. This pleat is actually right over the seam of the side to side back panel. And on the other side, I have opted to make this the opening. And so with the other side, it's going to get just a very small facing, maybe a very small placket so that it can have that overlap. This one 
it's just a pleat. I'll show you the other side in a second. And then we have all of the gathering here. So what I was talking about is that I may wind up just kind of scooching all of this more to the very center back so that it's nice and dense there. But this is like a little farther spread than I would want. So maybe if I do that, maybe I'll put one more little pleat right in there. That's a possibility. I'll just see when I go to try it on. And then this is that opening right there so and you can see just how sheer it is with my hand under here so it's going to be over the petticoat obviously so it really doesn't matter but yeah that's would not have worked with pockets so it's been over a week since the last segment of the vlog that you just watched and in that amount of time I have taken my trip to Disney come back did a call back for a show that Fingers crossed, hopefully went well. Got my fabric for my Halloween project, which is what I'm calling my spooky strawberry dress, kind of that sort of thing, but out of Halloween type fabrics. And was excited over an upcoming costuming event that was supposed to happen today, and then wound up canceling that costuming event when everyone basically said they couldn't come. I've also been slightly derailed by the fact that Silk Baron sent me two completely different shades of blue that they said were virtually imperceptible for my Felicity dress, so I don't know if the Felicity dress is gonna happen at this point, so that's great. And suffer through lots more heat in Seattle that really should not be here. Oh my god, this summer is the worst ever. And in that amount of time, I've kind of lost all motivation for this project. So it has sat there completely untouched. And yeah, my motivation has just completely flown the coop. So I'm kind of going to force myself to finish this skirt, at least for this vlog, ideally today, hopefully otherwise by tomorrow. All it needs is the waistband and the hem. There's really not much that it needs. So I am going to for sure do the waistband right now, hopefully do the hem by tomorrow as well. And then I kind of have to like self-examine, I feel like, because I am just not feeling motivated all of a sudden about this project anymore. I think the biggest factor is that I am so done with summer. Like again, this is the worst summer that we have ever had in the Pacific Northwest, as in the hottest summer. We're not used to temperatures like this and it's driving me crazy. So I don't want to make a summer dress, which is what this is. I want summer to be over. <laughs> and now that I've purchased my spooky strawberry dress fabric, I'm so just wanting to get to fall and Halloween and all of that. But like, I don't think you want to see a Halloween dress video in August, do you? Cause like, if you do, that's great. Let me know. Cause then maybe I'll just make the spooky strawberry dress here in August instead of waiting until at least September, which was my plan. <sighs> I know, I'm word vomiting. Anyway, this is how I feel right now. Sometimes you just don't want to sew. So I am gonna force myself to do the waistband. It should be super straightforward. It is going to be a straight strip of fabric. I tend to do all of my waistbands four inches wide, as in one strip of fabric four inches wide, that is then folded in half, and with the seam allowance taken away, winds up being one and a half inches wide of a waistband straight around. Now, because this Swiss dot cotton is sheer and light, I definitely need to line this. However, I really don't like using modern interfacing, so I think what I'm gonna do is I am just going to line the waistband probably with twill, white cotton twill. We'll see what I have in my stash, but basically it's going to be a cut that is probably about 45 inches long. That tends to be what I go for for waistbands and then four inches wide. And I'm going to put that on. I'm probably, I might do some sort of a placket in the closure as well. I can't remember even at this point where the closure is. So I'm gonna have to take a look at it. But yeah, I might be putting a placket in there as well as I put the waistband in. I have cut out and flatlined my waistband. I decided to go with cotton organdy for the inside part because I already had a strip that was just a little bit larger than what I needed for this. So I cut that out and I've surged it to the Swiss dot cotton. So this is the exterior, the Swiss dot cotton, and this is the interior. This will get folded inside. Now what I'm doing is I have pinned the skirt to the waistband and I started by making sure that the pleats that I had pinned in place on the skirt 
that they were even on either side because I did it on the form kind of measuring kind of eyeballing so I made sure that they were even on both sides and then I just pinned starting a half inch away from the edge of the waistband here because this is folded in so I don't need to like finish that edge at all because it is hiding in a pleat basically is what the opening is doing and so then I made the waistband go around I marked 39.5 inches on the waistband which was basically that's where the overlap should get to on that pleat and so this is that mark right here at first I did 40 and then I was like no I think historical stuff I usually do 39.5 so I did 39.5 and then I just pinned everything straight flat along until I got to the gathered section here on the skirt then what I did was I found the center point between where this had hit like the last pleat that went over on the skirt and where the 39.5 mark was I found the center point of that because that would be the center back of the skirt and I matched that with the center back of the skirt in the gathers because I'd already marked that before I gathered and pinned that in place and then I just sort of pulled up the gathers to fit and then I made a note of how far this seam because there's a seam right here how far that was from the center back made a little mark on the other side and made sure when I pinned up the gathers that that would also be in the same place so now everything is all pinned and it is ready for me to stitch and then I can finish the edges out and fold in the end and flip it and all that sort of stuff and with that the skirt waistband is done and she's ready for a hem and hooks and eyes on the closures I did decide not to do a placket mostly because I felt that there was enough of an overlap anyway because it's inside the pleat so that is just surged and folded over inside. I'll come back later after I have done the hem. So it is now Monday night and I still have not actually hemmed this skirt which means it is not happening in this video. So that will come in a later video. Honestly though, I am probably going to start the bodice right away because I am actually now feeling excited for the bodice. So I know that before I wasn't feeling really into sewing on this project, but I'm now feeling excited about the bodice. So I'm going to start on the bodice with the next vlog. Make sure to check back next week for that next vlog. Speaking of the vlogs though, I am going to try to keep like as much content going in each vlog. That said, I actually have very excited news. I am back to doing theater! <laughs> And my first rollback is a doozy. So I am actually going to be playing both Joe and Meg switching off nights in Little Women. And if you happen to be local to the Puget Sound area, it is going to be with Auburn Community Players September 24th through October 10th. And I will leave a link to the theater down below. I don't know if tickets are on sale yet, but if they are, I will put that in the description. So if you're interested in coming to see the show, it is in Auburn, Washington. And and you can come see the show. I don't know which dates yet I will be playing Joe versus Meg, but I will announce that here on my community channel once I know that. But all that said, it means that for the last few weeks I've been devoting some of my attention not to sewing and instead to memorizing and working on stuff. But tonight we started our first rehearsal and I know I've rehearsals four nights a week. So I'm going to be trying to sew as much as possible, but obviously it's not going to be as much as I have been for the last year and a half or more now that theater has not existed. So I do apologize if the vlogs get a little shorter, but I am going to be starting on that 1890s bodice next, so there should be a vlog next week. So far I'm going to try to keep to the twice a week schedule. If that changes, I'll let you know on the community tab also, but I am honestly super excited to get back into the theater. So anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week, at least for the time being, with sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays. But I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Ko-fi and my Patreon down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Angela. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!